Hello, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Oh, my. This month is going so fast, it seems. Hey, we have, is that Courtney? Yes, there he is. Okay. Hi, Courtney. <clears throat> so we are going to discuss tonight about raising healthy children. Um, All to do, we talked before about habits and all of that. Now we want to get down um, to how do we get children healthy? Um, how do we change what we're doing? How does that trickle down? So um, on the panel tonight, I have um, our CWC family and um, a, always a special guest there, um, Jeff Berger. So we are so grateful to have you guys on here. So I'm going to let you guys introduce yourself. And um, Courtney, do you want to start off? Sure, I can. Um, happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome to RUL Wednesday. Uh, we're excited to have you join us. Um, I'm actually, as you can see, I'm on my bike, and i um, just excited to, uh, to have this conversation and talk about family wellness. It's, uh, it's near and dear to me because um, I have a family, and I want to see my family as healthy as can be. And, of, of course, I want to be healthy as I can be as well uh, for them. And look what I just caught. It just literally landed on my, my arm. Oh, um, so it's a, what are these mayflowers? May, may, but whatever these bugs are. <laughs> Mayflies. But, mayfly. I said you mayflowers. said mayflowers and shit. Mayfly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you can pretty much see I'm kind of toast right now. Um, it's really been a relaxing day, but no, I'm excited. And I'm um, just looking forward to this conversation. Thank you, Heidi. Awesome, Courtney. It's great yeah. to have you as usual. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Mai, would you like to? Get next here. Sure. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Raising healthy kids. This is a tricky, tricky subject. There are so many things that can keep our kids <laughs> addicted and go go awry. So uh, I look forward to the discussion. Um, I have two kids myself, eight and a five-year-old, and they are sugar addicts. So looking forward to mm -hmm. any ideas that I can. And, you know, being a health professional, doing Courtney Wellness Companion, like I can't get my kids to eat my food. So it's a, it's a struggle. The struggle is real, you guys. <laughs> All right. I'll pass it over to Jeff. Yes. Great. Great. Thank, thanks so much. I'm always humbled to be asked to be on Wednesday uh, Wellness and uh, with this great team of, you know, inspirational people with their wisdom and knowledge. It's just truly amazing. I'm Jeff Berger, and I am known as your holistic wellness gladiator, and I'm a certified health and integrative wellness coach and a newly <laughs> certified holistic mental wellness coach. I'm all about the gut brain axis, which is the microbiome, which is a science that's really disrupting the health and wellness industry today to really get out there and provide value and information to people about what they're feeding their body temple. Because it starts here, goes down into the gut, and then it goes all through your temple. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very um, excited about tonight's um, talk. I don't have any kids. My kids are four-legged, a dog and two cats, but I do have nieces and nephews, and I, I've watched them grow. I've watched them go through their trials and tribulations. So um, thank you. Thank you so much for being on. And guess what? That is because you're even our fur babies and too. We're putting stuff into their mouth that was in there and their system too. So this kind of goes for everybody, right? And um, right. I want to start off here. Um, of course, my name is Heidi Lindsay. I am a wellness coach and uh, for CWC. And um, I just love my CWC family being on here every week to discuss wonderful topics of how do we get this country and our, our loved ones and stuff back to good health and happiness. So with that being said, I have two children of my own and a grandchild. Um, he just, my children are 24 and I going to be 19, my daughter next week and my grandbaby's one. So we're kind of starting here. And um, I must say, first off, none of us with parents, none of us are perfect, right? Like 
if we could go back and say, man, if I would have only knew this, then, you know, so we just learn as we go on. Um, but what's wonderful about being in a community like this um, with CWC is we're seeing, we, we, you know, we are connecting with wonderful people like Jeff Berger and all of our specialists and um, all of that. So we're seeing what is going on. We're learning as we're going and um, it's very important. So as I say that, I was talking earlier behind the set here to Jeff and mine, and we was discussing how do we start raising our children healthy? And when I say start, like we're doing whatever we can, but, and people, some people get offended whenever you say something about change, but that's okay. Don't get offended because we're all learning something. Um, what we do, we just try to do the best that we can for what we know. That's why we gain knowledge and we change and we evolve, right? So that is what this program tonight is all about. And to start off, our children, it, 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 remember that saying, it takes a village? Well, it really does. Because it starts from parenting, and we got here um, parents, grandparents, the family unit. Then you have your community, who they come in contact with, who's their friends. We got preschools. We got schools, right? We got social activities. So the more that we get it out there, the more we share this, the better community and the better village that we are building for our children. Does don't, anybody don't have forget anything the aunts, to say? The aunts and Which, uncles too. Yes, all all family, all family for sure. And um, that's that's so important um, to kind of be on the same page where everybody does something different. But you know, when we talk about health, this past year, been doing some research and stuff. This past year, we have had an abundant increase and diabetes, how and heart. Now, before it used to be type two to be a diabetes was mainly like in adults and stuff. So now they're finding over this pandemic that people now, the children are getting these diabetes that was only known for adults. So it is progressively getting worse. So what, what do we do guys? What anybody here want to start this off? And um, have any suggestions for parents out there? Real quick, before before you start, um, I just wanted to um, say hello to a couple people uh, on um, who's watching from Facebook. Um, please grant StreamYard permission so that we can view your comments. Because right now um, you're saying hi, and we don't know who you are. It just says Facebook user. Uh, so yes. just go go to that link, StreamYard. Um, streamyard.com forward slash Facebook and you only have to do it once and then future will can see your, your names again. So uh, I was able to log on to Facebook and I, I see that uh, it's a Shannon, the therapist is saying hi. Um, we have Jury. She's excited. Yeah. Hi. Hey, yay. What's happening? Dree. Hey. Um, <laughs> hello to you all from Facebook. Book land watching tonight. I'm not sure who says that because um, we're we're uh, live on a couple of um, of pages. Platforms, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so just please grant us permission to view your comments so that we can um, you we can uh, say hi to you. Not saying Facebook user. Um, so that would be super helpful. And then you just come back again. Yeah, um, we can personalize that, huh? <laughs> oh, so that's Jeff says that was me with aunts and uncles. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yes, cool. yes. Cool. So um, that's, all, whole, that's all I have to say. <laughs> the whole family. One thing, go ahead, one Jeff. Thing or... say, yeah. Go ahead, Courtney. Go ahead, Jeff. I was going to just no, say to gonna... um... <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Courtney, go okay. ahead. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, there are so many mayflies out here. Like, I'm almost afraid that if I talk, it's gone in my mouth. Like, they're I like, I see them. You can you see them? Yes. This is, this is unbelievable. I'm like, like my daughter would so not want to be on a river right now um, because of this kind of thing. But I was gonna just say too, um, for those of you that are watching um, or, or you know watching live, definitely share this out. 
um, cause we're going to be talking about some, some very relevant information, um, regarding your, your family wellness. So I don't know any family that's doesn't have interest in being healthier. Um, so we're going to be talking about how we can get the family healthier. And even through a pandemic, we're coming through it. Um, you know, we're going to be talking about things like that. So definitely tag some people and share this out. Um, cause it's going to be very valuable. Go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. Awesome. No, no, no. Thank that's, you for that's perfectly fine. And um, I just wanted to jump in, Heidi, because you bring up type 2 diabetes. And I am a survivor of a person who lived with uh, type 2 diabetes for almost 30 years and uh, found out that through some due diligence and research that it really is primarily food related. And I was able to, after all those years following a um, traditional protocol. It wasn't working and um, was able to learn that I could change that and successfully learned about, you know, gut health and was able to reverse type 2 diabetes, come off of five medications and lose 60 pounds. But um, I encourage um, parents today to really, really um, start investigating the foods that your kids are eating because the preservatives that are in these foods are starting to deteriorate the gut lining. And once that lining is um, um, broken, you're going to get into a state of dysbiosis. There's more and more cases of type two diabetes with children today um, over the last five to, you know, to 10 years, and it continues to escalate. And what's, what's really being done about it? you know, and we, we need to really educate ourselves and, and really be open to looking at other um, information that's out there, as well as other options that might um, be outside of mainstream, if you will, to give it a chance, because the idea here is getting to the root of the cause of anything that's going on with anybody physically and mentally. Awesome. Um, couldn't, yeah, could not agree with you more there, um, Jeff. And if anything, it, it's so weird because, like I said, these numbers are elevating due to, due to the pandemic. Okay, so yep. here's the situation. Through the pandemic, if anything, we could say that got good through this is a lot more people were cooking at home. They had time. They were cooking a little bit. Was it healthy? We don't know. Again, because you might be cooking, but what are you buying? When you're buying those meats, when you're buying things in the can, or if you're buying, they have preservatives in there. Preservatives meaning they're preserving that item, whatever that is in there for shelf life. So what are you eating? Like we, people like back in the day, you know, they lived off fresh gardens. They lived off of their own farms. You know, they had their local butcher. They had their, um, some people, if it was on by the sea, they were doing fishermen, you know, all of that. So now we have it where our food is coming from all over the globe. And it's, it's being preserved. So those preservatives on there is what is entering our body and, and disrupting everything that our body was not designed for. And so how do we do that? Okay. So people were cooking. They learned to spend that time a little bit during the pandemic. But at the same time, people were also... Um, on their on their couches people were also they they were depressed it w they were actually depressed kids weren't seeing other kids um adults weren't seeing their friends they were they were home from work so they weren't socializing so it was a, it was a whole disruption this year some good out of it a lot not so good so how do we get back to that how do we get back to cooking and we're going to discuss that, too, because we have a wonderful foodie, Miss Mai, on here that just loves to cook and make delicious meals and has her babies on there quite a bit cooking, too. So we're going to discuss that. We want to discuss how we as a community can share this information, can spread the word. And we have over there Mr. Courtney, who is out there doing activity daily. So not only do we got to eat right, um, but I'm going to share something here that it talks about 
um, right here. Whoop. And where? So 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise is recommended in children six to 17 years of age. Now, as all of you know, when you we, we were younger, we come in when the street lights were on, when we had to, you know, we I don't know about you, but I was out, as soon as I was up, I was outside playing with friends. How many of that do we see now? We, we don't see much. We don't see a lot of kids riding bikes. We do not see a lot of people, kids building forts or, or doing all these creative and, and physical activities, swimming together at a local pool. Um, these are just some of the things that we're not seeing anymore. Yeah, so I just wanted to add um, that you don't, kid, you don't see kids outside in the neighborhood. Like there's neighborhood and they're all inside um, in their air conditioning and their devices. Um, and, you know, there's, it's like, even though I live in a neighborhood, there are kids around, but we just don't see them. So it's hard to, um, you know, play, have the Interact. kids play with their neighbors, uh, especially. So you have to set up like deliberate play dates if you want them to play with other kids. And, you know, it's 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 also times are different because we are, I guess, more protective of our kids. We don't let them go out on their own. Right. Whereas when we were growing up, it's like, okay, get out. That's more latchkey kids. Yeah, <laughs> defend yourself. For yourself. <laughs> it was a little kinder, gentler world, a little can bit. I, can I add something to that? A thought. Absolutely. Um. So I mean, that is a very good point. It's like, how do you find kids? I, ultimately, I think it comes back to the adults in the room, right? The parents. Um, how do we take the lead on that? Because um, literally, I just took Issa out. Um, my, you and Heidi, you saw it because I sent it in our, um, I sent it in our group. You know, I got invited to be a part of this, this push-up challenge, right? So I take, take Issa outside, and she's playing with a group of friends. Now they live in a development next to our development because I don't know any kids in my development, so. <clears throat> I'm literally taking her and letting her play with kids and I'm kind of right there with her. Um, and I'm doing my thing, you know what I mean? I'm doing my own thing. I'm watching her, but then I'm doing push-ups. So I, I think as parents, I think we kind of have to take the leadership role and say, we have to grab this, the bull by the horn and say, we have to create this. The world we live in is not like it was where, like you just described Heidi. So right. in a sense, the opportunity is this parents get outside yeah <laughs> and yeah be active with your kids so guess what that actually does that gets everybody healthy <laughs> right? right so it's like who needs a play date like go out and play with your kids like they're your kids you know what i mean right. um so you know i think that's an opportunity for us but see that gets into a whole nother issue so then it's like as parents so many people i talk to on a daily basis they're so tired so their energy yeah. level is so low so now we have another problem you know, so now how do we get our how do we get your energy up as a parent? Because you have to be the leader and get your kids off the couch and get them off their their phones and their tablets and things like that. And that's, um, you know, so that was just kind of my thought on that. You know, you kind of have to I think it's an opportunity for us as parents or uncles and aunts or whoever. You know, it's an opportunity for us to take the lead and start getting ourselves healthy. And it's almost like for me, it's like I'm getting myself healthy so I can keep up with my three year old daughter. That's a good reason to get healthy. <laughs> not about right. it's not about abs. It's about I want to be able to teach Issa how to play basketball whenever I'm 50, you know, and she's only like 13. You know, yes. that's that's a goal. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, Mark. I, I, I totally agree with keeping up with my kids. That's the whole reason why I decided to, to really get my health into shape because I was tired. And I didn't want to go outside. They always ask, mommy, can you do this? Mommy, can you do that? And I'm like, I don't want to, I'm just tired. And I don't want to be that kind of parent that <clears throat> sits on the sideline and not participate with my kids. And um, it, it starts with me. Um, like, you know, you, you we're addicted to our devices as well. So whenever the kids ask us to play with them and we're like, no, we're busy, but really, what are you busy doing? You're busy scrolling Facebook. You're busy scrolling Instagram. Like, like just really think about it. Are you 
can you afford not to spend time with your kids? Because they're, they're only going to ask you so many times before they lose interest or they, they just think you don't care. So just be cognizant of that. Because right now, my kids are young and they want to be with me. But that window is short, right? And it's, right. And it's, and it's a great opportunity for you to, to build that bond with them, you know, because that usually that's a short window. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great point. Jeff, what do, you, what do you have to add? I know you have something. No, I think, you know, it, it's very, very true of, I think the parents need to engage a little bit more and pull away from their daily stuff and get involved with the kids because, um, you know, and, and I, I see it with my own brothers, um, with their kids growing up, it was always work, 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 work. There was no time for kids come home, eat, and then go back to work. And this is not really healthy for children growing up in this type of environment. And this is where the parents can set that example for those kids. But then it also not only setting the example, but it also gets them away from that daily grind of being stressed out and, um, you know, anxiety and tension because, a lot of parents, um, you know, from, I'll, I'll just say the parents that I'm familiar with um, um, react um, and they don't, you know, they, they tend to react and yell at their kids because their kids are bothering them. And I think the more that they would do this would kind of lessen the stress and get them out into fresh air or getting them active and um, lowering those stress cortisol levels. Yep, thanks for adding that, Jeff. Sure. So just curious to know, I, I know we have a, a studio, we have a, a, an audience of folks. If you're in the audience and if you're, uh, if you're on a daily basis doing some activities with your kids, we would love to, to hear from you. Maybe you can put a, a, a high five in the comments if, you're, if, you, if, you're, if your energy level is, maybe we'll say if your energy level is a, is a seven, maybe put, maybe put the number of, that your energy level is, one to 10. One would be very, very low. <laughs> And 10 would be extremely high. Put the number in the comments of your energy level because ultimately, if your energy level is five or below, um, really, we're going to just be, we're, these are just a bunch of words that we're going to tell you. But, but really, we have to, we really need to carve out some time for you and say, how do we get your energy level up? Because other than that, it's just a it's just a good feeling. Yeah, he's right. Or yeah, they're right. This is what I got to do. But if on a daily basis, if your energy level is low, it's going to be hard to do this. Um, you might do it one day, <laughs> but it's going to be yeah. hard to, to do it long term. So I, I'd just be curious to know, on okay. average, what is your energy level? One to ten. So Quadria um, said they her daughters uh, just came back from a walk. So they just came from a walk. So what would you say your energy level is, Dree? Just let us know in the comment. And then we got Jeff. He says his energy level is a nine plus today. Yeah. Awesome. Um, my energy level, uh, it's, it's between a seven and an eight on most days. <laughs> um, my kids uh, went swimming. I have my, my husband takes, uh, we take turn <laughs> with the kids. Uh, we tag team. So um, it really helps. Like when one of us is like tapped out, the other one takes over. So like involving your, your significant other, whoever family members so that they can rotate. Cause Lord knows the kids have way more energy than we do. And they always want to play when we're trying to do some work, but you know, uh, it just, it just takes, um, a few minutes actually just to go outside like let's go we're all going to put away our devices and let's let's go outside and, and and just um enjoy the fresh air so it's summer go swimming go to the park go wherever no i'm glad i'm glad that you, that you mentioned that my i was going to actually ask you to share because um just from the time that we've known each other we've only known each other for maybe about a year and a half or, or maybe even less time than that and um I've seen your transformation, like your energy level has, you know, I know you said a seven, but I mean, that's, that's actually, um, most days it seems like it's even higher than that, but a seven is actually pretty good. Um, but you mentioned going for a walk, you know, what are some other things that people can do individually and as a family to, to, to you know, to, to get people motivated and they get, you know, get people excited, you know? 
Hey, Anybody? Guys. <laughs> hey, honey. Real quick, real quick. Dree says her energy level today is an eight. Awesome, Dree. Way yeah. to go. Not just today, though. So for those of you, we were asking on average. So we we a daily a daily number that's good. Like like I just said, you can uh, on one day you might be able to do it. But what is your what is your energy level on average? That's really the number that we're looking for. So when you look at yourself in summation on most days, what is your what is your average energy level? Because that's what we're looking for consistency, and that's going to be the thing that's going to you know to create the change. Did you did you share your energy level, Courtney? I did. It might not have came through yet because I'm on this river. But my energy level on 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 average is a nine. Um, okay. I'm very I'm very fortunate to have a high level of energy. Um, I think it's because I move a lot, <laughs> to be honest. Um, my sleep is okay. I get about six hours a night of sleep. Um, I eat relatively healthy. I follow an 80, 20, 80, 20 rule. About 80% of the time I eat healthy and 20% of the time I eat whatever I want. That could be a protein shake. It could be a protein bar. <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's like, uh, um, <laughs> the worst thing you could eat. It just means whatever I want to eat. Um, you know, I move pretty much every day. And, um, as you can see, I'm on a river, I'm getting some amazing vitamin D and fresh air. Um, so I, I think when you start adding that stuff up, I think, I think that's why I have a, a high level of energy. Um, and I, and I usually can go very long, um, with when I'm competing, you know, with, uh, people that are much younger than me. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah. All right, mm -hmm. to Heidi's back. Yeah, sorry guys, I got booted off, so I don't know where he's left, but um, I guess it was the energy what, level thing. And yeah. um, what what is yeah. your what is your what is your energy level on average, Heidi? On average, see, it's tricky because I can go from a nine, and then I could go down to a five. Like it just, like I said, I don't know so, if anybody's so seen. That. So just take the average to so a seven. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So six, seven, probably. But like I said, I have my peaks and then I have that. But that yeah. is also, um, I don't know if anybody's seen out there when I said um, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia years ago. And so I struggle with that. And there's days that, but to be constantly moving because once you do stop and slow down, that makes a big difference. Diet makes a big difference. Um, if your body is in a state of inflammation or with these things, you know, we talked about preservatives, different stuff that you're getting in there. Um, it, it can go very low and at the same time it could go very high. So mine, yeah, mine's like a roller coaster and that that's how my body works. So I see my wife. She says her energy level is a five. So she, so most days I'm taking East outside and some days she's, some days she does it. Um, but it's, I would say it's, it's getting higher. Um, when you say honey. <laughs> yeah. And you know, getting back to, okay. Like these are the things how can we get parents? What What is the thing here? So we have our goals. We're talking about what the problem is. Now, what are some solutions here that we can do? I have something here. First off, I'm, I'm a person, I got to write it down and have a visual of what, what needs to be done, what needs to be changed, right? Because a lot of times just saying it, it goes, you know, it goes out of the mind there, you know, out of sight, out of mind, but writing it down. Okay. What, how am I going to reach this goal? And when we talk about aunts, uncles, family, community, it takes a village. If you are finding, if you're a single parent out there or both parents are out there working and, and you don't have lots of time, let's talk about things that can happen. Reaching out to family members, um, having your child, if they're, uh, when my children are in preschool, I chose a preschool, which was the YMCA here. So they were swimming while they were in the preschool, which was awesome. Swimming is a very healthy, um, you know, and a wonderful exercise. So I chose a preschool. Once they started school, 
they got whatever they was interested, but I wanted them active into sports. So if somebody does not have that time, taekwondo, karate, um, basketball, football, baseball, any of those sports, they teach discipline. They teach healthy habits most of the time. Sportsmen structure. Structure is huge. There. Structure yeah. is huge. And um, so those are things that you can do. Don't feel that you got to do this alone. I mean, yeah, get yourself to the point. Where where do I need to make time? How do I cut? Schedule yourself in. You and your kid. What is should be the first thing on the calendar is what? You and your children, right? You and your children should be the Absolutely. first thing on your calendar. So Absolutely, Heidi. Write that down, you know, get a hold of people. Um, but some people live in a community and they don't maybe know anybody. This pandemic has made it to where socialization almost has become new to us again because we're so used to doing our own thing. So um, schedule yourself and the kids, yes, yeah, send the calendar, my very, very good. Um, I'm also going to put in there. So we talk about that. Let's talk about, too, the devices. In order to get, your kids are seeing stuff on those devices, right, that are ca catching their attention. So by simply saying to your kids, get outside, go play, find something to do. Do you think that it, that's exciting? They're not... They don't care about that. They are like, show me. Show me what's exciting. Show me what is fun. Get out there and do this with me and let me see something. They are visual. So, Courtney, That's like what? you said, you're out there. Your, your, your baby is out there seeing you do your thing every day. My, your well, kids are well, out yeah. there and they're, you know, watching you cook and do that and walk. Yeah, I, th I think I think it goes back to what we were saying before, like as as parents or as guardians or as uncles or as aunts, we should take a leadership role. And, you know, I taught my older daughter how to throw the football. You know, I taught Courtney how to play tennis. I coached her basketball teams. You know, um, I know everybody's not going to be able to do that. Um, and that's fine. But like Heidi said, get them into sports, you know, get them into that. So now you have a family activity. Um, also, too, I wanted to mention uh, one of our business partners, Lynette, joined the call. Um, oh, I don't see her anymore, so she's maybe she's gone. There <laughs> she is. She, she's, she's back gone. again. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome. Yeah, welcome, Lynette, to the hey. conversation. Um, she's, a, she's a nutritionist, and she's also a partner with uh, Courtney Wellness Companion as well. And obviously, food is going to play a big role in uh, family wellness. So, yeah, welcome to Are You Well Wednesday. Thank you all for having me. Nice to have you on, Lynette. And uh, feel free, yeah, to chime in if you want to introduce yourself a little bit. I know Courtney just did, but if you wanted to um, come on and give a little bit um, about who you are and what what are your goals. All right. So yes, my name is Lynette, and my business is a uh, Down by Lynette Way. Um, I specialize in the ketogenic nutrition, low carb. Um, ketosis, as well as help meal prepping um, for families and single and busy moms. So that my goal is to help women learn how to not only feed themselves, but to also pick the most nutritious uh, foods for their little ones. So it's, it's um, amazing how we're talking about this this evening about children um, and just the well-being of families and the mindset of our kids. So I, I do feel that it's very important. Um, nutrition is probably the most unthought about thing for kids. I was actually up at 4.30 this morning, honestly, kind of doing some studying. Couldn't go to sleep, so I was like, I might as well be productive. Um, and one of the things that I was uh, reading is how – you have a lot of the children that may be autistic, that may have um, epilepsy um, and any other um, disabilities such as ADD and how nutrition has also helped them neurologically. So um, I feel that wellness, nutrition, and just being there for our kids and like I said, 
um, I think when I came in, just being a role model to our children, whether it's cooking, and just kind of showing them the best ways of living. So I think that's very important. Um, yeah, sorry, real quick. Thank you for the introduction. Hi, so, Jeff. <laughs> I think that was my long drawn out introduction. Um, Jeff, you put um, on the on the, I guess the same wavelength as what Lynette was saying. Can you talk about the comment you left um, about preservatives and canned goods and all that stuff? I have to unmute myself. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, when it comes to preservatives, um, what I've learned, uh, you know, over the last couple of years is when I'm going out and looking at um, different um, foods that are in the store and I'm really getting away from boxed and cans, canned foods for the most part, um, make sure that you read the label. Um, if you can't, if you cannot um, pronounce a word on that um on that can or box, stay away from it. W one of the things that I did learn is companies are now getting a little bit savvy in some of their words and they're renaming chemical preservatives and um, just altering them a little bit. The chemical preservatives that are incorporated into, into most foods are addictive and these companies know it and they do alter um, your, your, you know, the, the thinking, your mental wellness, um, when it comes to anxiety, stress, and, um, you know, from, from all those types of mental living with those mental annuities that your that your kids and your, and the adults are living with today. So, um, these are things that, um, you know, I think I, I really encourage parents to really start looking at when they are feeding their kids. Um, and some of these have been out for years and years and years. And I just, yeah, you've got it up there now with the, the, the food additives and preservatives for 15 years, sodium nitrate, mono, um, MSG, which is monosodium glutamate, um, food, artificial food coloring. There's different numbers of coloring that um, have a plethora of different anomalies when it comes to, um, you know, destroying those uh, neurotransmitters in your gut that communicate with your brain. So really, really important. And then you've got the aspartame, which is in um, pretty much all of those sugar-free sodas. And then BHA, BHT, you know, look at that because those are synthetic. They're related to synthetic antioxidants, which is really, really um, crucial to understand that. Jeff, that aspartame... Yep. You know, back in the day before I um, started researching and doing and uh, learning all of this, you know, it was, oh, OK, we're just going to switch over to diet pop and we can drink as much as we want of it because it's it's sugar free. It's healthy. That's what, you know, you ain't going to get diabetes here. But with that aspartame, once I found out, it's like your body does not digest it. It does not get it out there were so i that's why i honestly think a lot of onset problems um as far as um, autoimmune disorders Correct. are definitely offset with this because our body these are foreign objects and what happens when your body when something enters your body and it's a foreign object your body is tuned and tuned to get it out to fight it that so when you're putting these chemicals in bodies all the time it, it's a constant fight. So Correct. when there's a constant fight in your body, you're exhausted, you're tired all the time because your body is in super mode all the time. Exactly. And aspartame, there are studies out there now that are leading to that aspartame leads to dementia, mm -hmm. Alzheimer's. So, um, you know, aspartame is what, 40, maybe 50 years old. Now that we've been consuming that, um, in our products, things are happening, things are deteriorating, and people are developing all these different types of autoimmune diseases, not only from aspartame, but all of the other chemical components that are breaking down the gut integrity and destroying the, um, you know, the symbiosis of what's really supposed to be happening. Because as I've preached before, our human, our body temple is created of human cells, microorganisms, and viruses. We have a virome in our body along with the organs and the systems. 
And for the most part, man-made chemicals, we can't, we can't, um, they're foreign, as you said, they're foreign and we don't know how to react with that. So plants are put here for a reason. Food is medicine. We need, you know, pure food. Right. Your, your lo local, um, you know, delis, your local that, you know, trying to, trying to get that, but, um, it's absolutely right. And it would be safe to say that these ingredients and these things that are going in our children's body is making them sometimes react the way they're doing. Do you ever hear somebody now, we say it all the time, what are the kids thinking now? Like, why are kids so different now? Not just the activity, but their whole chemistry is being kind of altered because of all of these chemicals and and preservatives that are that are in the foods right yeah. and it, it's coming from their parents i mean these kids are born their parents have been living with this for 20 30 years and now that they're now that they're being born today it's being carried through generation to generation and it needs right. to change yes go ahead my go ahead my yeah so like a, a lot of times when kids are diagnosed with adhd or autism they the the doctor or nutritionist would say well you need to cut out the the food coloring um that may attribute to the hyperactivity and you got to cut out the preservative so like we are aware that these things have a negative effect on our kids but it's in so many things especially the convenience food and like jeff said it's there it's designed because it's addictive and they want you to consume those things and you know it's 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 scary to think about all the stuff we're ingesting and i know that lynette has something to say about this <laughs> as being a nutritionist and having what three kids so oh, yeah, yeah. And it's so and i'm gonna be very honest with you and i swear um this is not uh um i literally was up at when i say 4 30 i could not sleep i was up at 4 30 in the morning literally on this exact same topic <laughs> And I just find it very interesting. I was like, okay, well, this just was not an inconvenience here. So, yes, um, food coloring and just trying to uh, to assist our kids with natural foods. And like he's like, um, I, I think Mr. Jeff said, if you can't read it, don't feed it um, to your kids as well as yourself. And I know uh, I think the the main thing is the convenience of a lot of the the foods they've made it so convenient and so easy for um, our, you know, whether it's like oh, McDonald's or just any place, just convenience because we're always so busy and we're always, you know, on the go. I, like me, I have three kids. My youngest, two, I actually do have an autistic child. And with him, I'm cutting out a lot of things. <laughs> like literally, it's one of those things that, I'm working on his meal, um, his meal plan and things that I'm trying and things that I'm taking away from his meals. And it's so funny that you said that because I'm currently actually um, thinking about ex even expanding my own business. Like, you know what? Maybe that's something I need to start thinking about as far as like, because even though I help other moms, but maybe it's something that I can also assist with the meal prepping of children, you know? I just think that it's very important, natural foods, you know, just, it's just natural. And then I think when we prep, if we, if we were to prep, like I know my boys, they love chicken, they love protein. If so, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and make my own chicken nuggets. And I'm, I bet you it's going to taste so much better than the nuggets that you find in the freezer, you know, just, and there's, and if a lot of these recipes are out there, they're so simple. I think we just got to take the time out and do it. You know, and, and honestly, it take it puts the fun back into it. But yeah, just all natural, basically natural. And then even with the sugars, I, th I think like like you said, sugar one is the most addictive thing there is. So the kids, they're going to love it and they're going to want more and more and more Even with the diet sodas. Like you said, your body does not even absorb half the ingredients in it. And it tricks your body anyway. It's, it's not good for you. Basically, none of this stuff is good for you. So it's just all natural, whole foods. Make it yourself, basically. That's what I say. Just make it yourself. Take the time out. If you can take the time out to 
go to the store and go to the grocery store and actually literally make I, I look at it like this when you you find out what you like to eat like what your family likes to eat what you like to eat and get your kids involved i mean i, I don't know I, th I just think that it's really important that we show and we teach our kids to like certain foods like vegetables because i know a lot of kids don't like vegetables but when you choose to um or when you you fix it up to make it look like something delicious like you can make um you can make um like veggie fries you can make your own veggie fries um tater tots you can make your own tart uh, out of uh whether cauliflower or broccoli it's just little things that you can do to you know feed your kids um even with the like you have like baby foods um those have a lot of preservatives in it as well make it yourself if you have a blender at home blend it i mean you can use the same ingredients and applesauce bananas yeah, yeah absolutely lynette like absolutely. that is so and making it fun bringing it to here's the thing mm -hmm. this could be such an opportunity to spend with your child when they're little, start showing them. When you're grocery shopping, have exciting day. Today we're doing grocery shopping. Make it exciting. Like, um, how can you do that? It's an event. We yeah. are going grocery shopping. We're going to look, and you're reading, and you're talking to them, not mm -hmm. sitting there pushing a buggy, looking through your phone, and you're mm -hmm. yelling at your kids because they're going. Yes. Everybody's done it. I'm saying everybody has done this. Mm -hmm. But what can we do? We can sit there as they're looking around and say, can you please hand me a pepper? When you talk mm -hmm. about the pepper, what is what is good about the pepper? Yeah. The kids are going to remember that. Yes. You know, kids are going to, oh, mommy said that pepper had this or antioxidants or they might even not know what it is, but yeah. they will they will consume yeah. it in their brain. Yes. And um, making that we're, uh, my, I love too because she does her own gardens. Um, it's here, in, um, hard here in Pennsylvania because you got your months there, but she could do all year round. Have a little indoor, teach your kids how to grow their own vegetables. Mm -hmm. They will love it, you know? So doing these things, write it and write it down and little steps every single day is going to make lifetime changes. Yeah, so just to add on to the gardening piece, uh, a lot of adults need some help with that. So make it an activity that you do with your kids. Get some seeds, get some soil, grow some peas, grow some <laughs> whatever. Like, they're easy. And if they die, that's fine. Just grow a couple of pots and they have kits that you can do. But, like, once they start to pop up, it's, like, it's so fun. It's because you get to see, a, like, growth happening <laughs> it's super fun like lettuce it go, goes fast and herbs just like do bacon activity your kids so like you're doing you're you're hitting a few uh points you're spending time with your kids you're growing something that is that you can eat um and you're getting outside if you can like and and you're teaching your kids a, um a routine or responsibility like you got to water right. it you have to nurture it so that it can get bigger and you can and then you can enjoy your harvest i mean it's it's it doesn't have you don't need a lot of space really a lot of things can be in containers you can grow it on a windowsill like there's so many options you can grow things hydroponically like this is what i'm doing i'm experimenting i'm not a master gardener but like the more you do it the better you get and you know, I'm thinking we should do like a, a, a indoor gardening kind of thing. Class, uh, that would be awesome. We yeah. can do that one week. In fact, I, I'm pumped about that. My dad used to have big garden my whole life and he tended and I grew up just going through there, picking a tomato, wiping it off and walking down the road and eating the tomato. Like that's how we grew up and in the summer. And I love that, my, which is going to make me want to um, segue right into this. There is different. We just talked about gardening. Um, there's, there's other things too. building stuff. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, even as a girl, we was like tomboy, we'd go out and we would build things out of sticks. We'd build a fort or we would use our mind in 
just you knowing I'm not talking about math, um, book mathematics, but looking at something in the sizes, knowing where to go, how's this going to work, um, going outside and building stuff with your kid. It don't. It could be with Lincoln Logs, whatever, but they're using, utilizing their mind, they're getting off the couch, they're doing, having um, a little thing set up in your yard, a little race or something an obstacle course, having something fun like that, that whole, remember we used to do um, the whole little horse races or the sack races, and you would go in the sack, some people did pillowcases, and you would do the sack races. Like these are different fun things that you can do with your children that can be outside. And I'm learning that. I wish I would have thought and knew that now, you know, back then. True, agree. Um, Jeff said, don't get the seeds from Monsanto. <laughs> yes, be very, very careful where you get your seeds. Okay, so that's something to be cognitive of, of where you're yes, going Mon to get your plant. Exactly. Monsanto is the company that injected um, glyphosate, which is a chemical in Roundup because it was um, patented in 1974 as an antibiotic. So they injected it into the corn, uh, genes of corn and soy. I think there's other seeds as well, but um, glyphosate is, is a poison. Um, and whatever the insects don't eat, because it, once they eat it, they, they get killed. And whatever they don't eat, we eat. So just be aware of that. Right. That's awesome. And even some things, guys, as simple as to when you're going to a store park way further away and add those extra steps the kids you know right now if you're not right up on that door the kids are like oh why are we parked way down here and i even found some i found myself doing sometimes and i'm like no why not park a little further down and those little steps and stuff like that you know um so as we talk too we're going to go into more so let's talk about fast food and all of that. How can we get that? How can we get the kids interested in what we're cooking versus let's just go to a fast food restaurant? Well, start, and it's kind of hard to kind of backpedal after your kids have been in this habit, but that's when you sit down and you have kind of like this family meeting about talking about being healthy because I know parents out there are like, well, guys, I've already been doing this. How can I get my kid to reverse? Well, let's let's start communicating with them. Let's start showing them facts. Okay, this is healthy. What does that mean to be healthy, not healthy? Like, let's start talking to our children. Let's sit down. Let's communicate. And let's get a game plan going. Okay, we're going to have, okay, we won't cut fast food out. But what can we do? It's going to be a reward. So maybe um, Courtney talked about the 80-20, eating healthy 80% of the time, 20% of the time, incorporate some of whatever, you know, that you've been doing, okay? That, that would be sustainable because to sit there and say, hey, we're never, you're never having McDonald's again, that is not even, you might as well just quit now because the kids are going to be like, I, I don't want to hear it. But if you ask, like, this might be a reward. And on Saturdays, hey, we go to movies or we go get get dinner out. And you do that as a as a family fun reward rather than an everyday habit. Any guys any you guys want to? Yeah, I got I have an, a good idea because this is an idea that I was actually thinking about. And I know you were talking about as far as like fast food. Sorry, I'm, I'm digging while I'm playing with my son at the same time talking. But <laughs> um, fast food. Um, I think with my boys, they love McDonald's, and it only is because of the, because the of the the toy. <laughs> it's always just because of the toy. You can literally make it fun and get your own toys. You can go to Dollar Tree, especially for the young, small ones, and say, "Hey, you know, kids, let's we're gonna have our um, French fries, and you can make your own French fries, um, your own nuggets, and let's pick a toy." You know, and it, it's probably so much more fun when they can pick it themselves. So you can literally make it convenient as well as um, fun with your kids by doing the same exact thing. And it may even be 
better. And even with shakes, I let the boys pick out their own uh, ingredients, like their strawberries and things like that. And let's do it. I let them participate in blending it. Press the button. So yeah, just yeah. getting them, just getting them involved makes it way more fun. So, uh, right. I totally that. yeah. Uh, Lynette, I love that. That is so awesome because that is true. Mm-hmm. So the times, especially when they're little, McDonald's well, is a big thing because you had your Happy Meal, you had mm-hmm. your toy. So, like you said, go to the dollar store and yeah. not. Not that you want to do, but when they're little like that, it is when you're trying to, here's the word transition. Mm-hmm. When you're trying to transition now of habits that you've been doing that maybe have not been so good, let's transition. So let's get a game plan. And how can we do that? And that is a wonderful way to transition that. Mm-hmm. Go to the dollar store, get a few. Hey, we're going to have this meal. And guess what? If you eat some of these vegetables, you're going to get your prize. You know, if you if you eat your broccoli and if you're just starting out and for any parents that are starting out in that, just be mindful right right out of the gates for that. Um, Like um, Lynette said about the baby food, they have bullets now and all those blenders put your and try to make as much natural stuff as you possibly can. I know it's convenient and they got little Tupperware dishes and all of that, but make that up. Um, pick a day that you can and make it fun and um, spending time. I love when we cook with um, when we cook with Maya and Regina. Oh my God, we have a blast laughing and just ingredients. And I was like, Oh my God, I never even heard of that stuff before. But now I'm like, you know, Chris is like, what is that? And I'm like, Oh, I'm learning a bunch of new stuff, hon. That and I even cooked for years and years, but. You know, you're always learning something new. Oh, I think you're muted, Mai. Okay. So uh, if you're watching uh, live or if you're watching this in the replay, please drop in the comments your kids' favorite fast food restaurant. So for me, uh, just like Lynette, my kids love McDonald's and Papa John's. (laughs) They think Papa John's got the best pizza and McDonald's has got the toys and my son is like can we go to mcdonald's can we go to mcdonald's so we make it kind of like a a a special occasion kind of thing um when we're traveling that's when we we have mcdonald's or um when um you know like it's a once in a while kind of thing because like if we eat it every day it's like it's like everything else it's not special and they kind of take it for granted um Uh, Quadria says Chick Fil A is her is her favorite her kid's favorite. Um, Courtney says <laughs> Issa likes Chick Fil A. She even made up a song, so we would like yeah. to hear that song, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we I got to hear that song there, Courtney. So yeah, with this being said, I hope and if you need help, okay, CWC. Let's just talk about what we have to offer here. We have foodies, we have chefs, we have nutritionists on here, Um, a wide range. We have pediatricians that are that. So um, we have a wide range of strategic partners and partners and everything. So if you are looking at how to get that game plan, how to get that started, feel free um, or let anybody else know too feel free to message us. We'd be happy to help you and let anybody that you know um, to contact Courtney. We're going to put that in there to go ahead. My, I'm going to put, I'm a slow typer. So, (laughs) okay. Um, Quadria said we make it a special occasion for a cheat meal. So yeah, make it special. Um, I just want to go back and, um, read some of the comments while we're kind of wrapping up jeffrey had to leave he says thanks uh to everyone on the panel oh sorry i put that out there okay um awesome session tonight so great information for the kids in the future so thank you um uh jeff and then um courtney earlier said nutrition is huge for those with little ones include them in the cooking of healthy meals and they will more like to eat so exactly make it fun they like they think it's a, but they think it's a game. Yes. <laughs> and they, they like to, they like to be with you. It's no matter what you do. I think it doesn't matter what you do. 
a lot of the times, especially the young ones, they just want to hang out with you because they think you're the greatest and like take advantage of that time. Right. Um, and if you were busy, hang out. Like I said, if you were busy, mom, dad, whoever parenting, um, reach out to reach out to others again activities in school and stuff just get your kid um get your kids get them out get their activity levels up and get their nutrition going so yeah so did you say there's another one my yeah so, okay yeah so jeff says put time limits on devices and make a game and challenge for your kids so this is actually yes. what i do we have android and our all of our accounts are linked to google so it's called family link link and you can put a time limit on it and it's you can access to the app and so if you want your kids to only have 30 minutes um you can set that up and then they can earn more time as the day go on if they want more time for their games or their youtube or, or whatever um i know that some parents they they um change the wi-fi password especially for older kids um so i mean that's a good strategy because you can control because without wi-fi i mean come on you're you, what's <laughs> What did you do with them on. <laughs> That's cutting them off here. So, yeah. yes, thank you, um, everybody, for joining tonight. I hope this has been such valuable information and a great start to transition into that healthier lifestyle. Um, again, you can go to icourtney.com and start up. Please tell a friend, a family. Um, tomorrow, we will be cooking with my time. I do want to tell a little bit about that Absolutely. and then follow up with uh, Patricia. Tomorrow, we are going to be um, making um, walnut shrimp. Um, so this is kind of like the, uh, something you would get at a, a Chinese restaurant or a, a, a Chinese takeout. It's, um, a healthier version, a sugar-free version, and it's going to be so good. So we're going to make our own candied walnuts and as well as, uh, the shrimp. So you don't want to miss this. And, um, and then after cooking, we have, um, how money works financial class with um patricia who be and um and fred there this is week two and it's uh i guess included for our cwc members um and i think it's it's going for four weeks so the next time if you're interested you can sign up for it and then um on sunday we have a bonus cooking class with myself and um lynette we're going to be making chicken chorizo spinach uh and cheese stir fry oh my god it's so good so it's gonna be uh at noon and it's uh, it's, it's gonna be free to everybody include members and non-members so just check our events page and we are so excited um to be here with you and to to you know share health with you because i don't know it's for me it may i want to other others to feel the, the time of energy like just to feel good from inside out and it's possible i mean yes. i'm not anything i'm not special i am not doing anything work that you put in and just and then the community really helps to you know re-energize you because sometimes doing things by yourself uh oh, it can be a drag but like you see the renew energy it, it helps a lot and Yep. Guess what? I'm going to end here and saying with our community, it takes a village, right? So whatever you're looking for, like I said, CWC is here for all your um, physical, mental, financial, all your well-being. So feel free, um, make sure you join us and we'd love, um, love to talk to you. So if you have any questions, comments you want to leave, Please check us out and please, please leave some comments there and hope that we uh, helped you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, guys. Bye. Talk to you. See you later.